Banjara. There is a story I want to tell, the story of my people. In the past, we've moved from place to place, although now we are more settled. Our gypsy lifestyle has taken us into many parts of the world. I came into India by carrying the Muslim transports from Persia and Egypt. There is very great evidence that they are one of the lost tribes of Israel. They're Bedouin, all their uh, social structure is same as Abraham. Today, we number at least 20 million in India. We are scattered throughout this land, living in small villages called Tandas. The Tandas are strong, close-knit communities of blood relatives, having strong kinship and unity. But we are suspicious of outsiders, even those of other Tandas. Our children learn village work from a young age, men, women and children working together side by side. That way, our family traditions are passed down through the generations. We make our living as farmers, traders, laborers, and embroiderers. We are hardworking people. To survive as Banjara, we have learned skills and trades adapting to the needs of the society where we live. Some of my people have to work in the city and have made their homes in the city slums. People see us as the poorest of the poor, but I believe it is poverty of spirit that lies at the root of our physical poverty. A life of labor doesn't give room for education. Like our ancestors, many of us cannot read or write. Uneducated, they call us. We feel crushed by society and pushed down spiritually. We know a void that cries out for salvation. So few, too few of us know the truth. Though I am a believer in the Creator God, I am a minority among my own. I live in India, surrounded by idols and gods. Many of my people are animist, living in fear of evil spirits, devoting their lives to ritual, not knowing God's grace and love, never knowing if God hears their prayers. The Banjara are precious to me. My kingdom is not complete without them. I am a jealous God and will not tolerate other gods in their midst. I will reveal myself to those who seek me. I came to bring release from darkness and sin. O Banjara, how long will you live your lives separate from me, made in my image, created with purpose, freedom and expression? My heart aches for your worship. Come dance now for all the world to see my glory in you. They have a tremendous love for God once they find God. They, they can abandon anything and everything to bring Christ to earth. We Banjara are known for our tribal dance. We follow our ancestors in traditional dancing and culture. We want our people to know and follow the one true God. Once we worship many gods, now we believe in and worship our Lord Jesus. We have left everything to follow him.
The Lord is revealing His healing power to our people in miraculous ways. I have seen people with AIDS, snake bites and scorpion bites getting cured by prayers to Jesus. God does so many miracles that people keep coming to Him and believing in Him. People have stopped worshipping idols. Without Him, we are nothing. So one day I'm playing soccer. Uh, one boy came and hit with his leg, with his shoes. But uh, one of my friends took me to the Christian boarding hospital. Finally, doctor decided to amputate my leg from the knee. I just cried. I don't know how to pray, but I just cried, Lord, if you could heal my leg, I want to serve you. Please help me. I don't want to lose my leg. And finally, God answered my prayer, and I didn't lose my leg. I got TB and had to visit doctors in various districts and provinces, and people said that it would be hard for me to survive. One pastor told me, our God will forgive you from all kinds of sin. I then went and confessed and asked forgiveness for many sins on behalf of my ancestors. Then Christians came to my house and prayed for me, and I started getting better, and now I am healthy. Shine now for all the world to see. Come shine now for all the world to see. The light of God, the light of God, the light of God. When the Nayaks know God, they are the ones who lead us and teach us. The Nayak in our village helped us to learn the Word of God, and even though we couldn't read or write, he had a young person read us the stories of the Bible. We were so excited to know that we belong to God. Our heart is for developing local leadership among the Banjaras. And the house church movement has been the best implement to do that. We're now working with an indigenous system so that it should just spread like wildfire throughout the Banjaras all over India. Uh, one, two, three times I am visiting a new area. Many uh, youth uh, leaders came and beat me. They struggled me. They dis uh, disturbed me. That's why I am again and again I am going the Thandas, the places. After I am going uh, four or five times, they, they are changing. And they came and sit and they heard the uh, word of God. Uh, that's why they're taking a baptism. They already live in half the districts of India, so without even moving at all, they could reach half of India just by reaching all the different peoples within their own district. Beyond that, they love to travel. They're gypsies by nature, so they will go anywhere and preach the gospel to anyone. The beginning gave the training, how to get the training for 10 members. And they are believers and the workers, they are responsible people. They are helping the people. Like within 10 years, now 700 houses going on by the grace of God. are really excited about being able to do Vacation Bible Schools, which is a 10-day course. We teach the children songs, scriptural songs, and uh, Bible stories, and they just love it. About 10% of the mothers would sit in and listen to their children uh, and the stories. 
And so they were very, very receptive when we came in with the gospel. There's only 3.6% literacy among the women. I would like to see them educated through fifth grade. And then they can go out and reach their village and they also can reach the children. World evangelization lies in the hands of the children, which is what I believe. If you miss the children, you miss the whole world. My heart is really that uh, these adult literacy programs and the children's vacation Bible school will bring the family together and they will be able to read God's Word. And they plan to go throughout not just the Banjaras, but all the different tribal people in Andhra and then beyond. So it's no doubt that they will uh, reach, and they are now reaching, way beyond their own roots. So 1991, by faith, with two suitcases and my two children, we came to the Hyderabad Motor area. We had hired the one building and we started ministry. So, so far we have 45 workers, our pastors working with our mission. And we have also started school and orphanage. At that time we have only 10 children. And now we have 300 children. Since 1976, we have been working with the Banjaras. We adopted them as a people group, and we've done all kinds of things to try to bring that into focus. Uh, radio programs, vacation Bible schools, adult literacy, uh, all the different ways. But the most significant thing is prayer. And if you really want to help the Banjaras, pray for them. We can't find a single people group movement on earth minus prayer. I'd never thought of unreached people groups, but then when I studied them and found the statistics and how few of them had ever heard the gospel, it changed my life. The Banjara people deserve the right to hear, and the Banjara people need to have the Christian community love them the way they say they love Christ. And if they're going to be reached, we're going to have to reach them with God's love. And we're going to have to purpose in our heart to reach beyond our comfort zones in giving, in going, and in sharing. God is moving among our people. We invite you to join with our pastors and workers in prayer and support so that my people would know God's love and be a blessing to all the peoples of India. God is saying to you, to the Bajara people, Arise, shine, your light has come. Greater things that you have not even imagined that you could do, God can do through you. Show them that you are a real God. One who gives us joy in our hearts. One who makes us dance in our the hearts. Love isn't just for you. The love is for all of those who don't know God. And they will teach the word of God wherever they go. He wishes none to perish, but all to come to salvation. You, O oh God, have placed a new song in our hearts turning our mourning into dancing and clothing us in garments of praise. We will not keep silent, but will forever sing your praises. Thank you.